Hello everyone, welcome back to the new interesting SQL tuning case study. It's been a while that I didn't post any SQL tuning case study videos, so sorry for that. So let's start afresh with a new case study on long queries. That is nothing but a queries with so many predicates in the where clause that it may be sometimes even confusing where to actually start with the query tuning. So, so this is the select statement. For time being, let's ignore this hint. So selects E dot first name, E dot last name from employees E, departments T, jobs J, locations L, countries C. So this is a select statement which has got five different tables joined together using a common column conditions among them. And there are so many where clause predicates here. So where E dot employee ID in, there's a subquery here. When E dot phone number, E dot higher date greater than 30th Jan 2004 to and less than 30th Jan 2006. A dot commission percentage in 0.25 and 0.15. Then the departments and employees are joined using the common column department ID. Then we have D dot location ID is equal to 1700 and so on. And there's also an exist operator at the end along with a subquery for the exist operator. So looking at this case study, sometimes you may get confused where to actually start the query execution or basically which is the first table that we should be accessing it so that the query performs very fast. So in order to again look at such queries which has got five different tables joined together, you can always again go back to the same fundamental approach for query tuning which states that we should always start with such a column in the where part of the clause which is going to give you very less number of rows and the data set which is retrieved out of that column will be further joined with the other tables and may have to make sure that those two tables which are joined together should be based on a primary key and a foreign key relationship. So this will make the query execution much faster. So there are five tables here, employees, departments, jobs, locations, countries. Like I said, if we had to start with such a column in the where part of the clause, which is going to give me very less number of rows. And we should always avoid the join operation at the first and also the exist operator. Uh, so I have given a case study on exist operator previously. You can go back to the previous video to refer why we shouldn't be using the exist operator at the first. So the using of exist operator at this part of the clause, we shouldn't be touching it first, right? So this is absolutely avoided. Then this, all this join operation, we cannot start with the join operation, right? Because this is against the fundamental approach. So the only possible columns or the where in the where part of the clause left is a dot employee ID, E dot phone number, E dot hire date, commission percentage, then D dot location ID, then we have minimum salary, again L dot city is equal to Bombay, and C dot region ID is greater than three. So only these are the columns which we can initially touch or basically access the table using such columns, but we have to access such a column which is going to give me very less number of rows. Now, if I see E dot employee ID in, so employee ID in an employees table is a primary key. So any value which is coming inside this subquery is going to have only one occurrences. But we just have to make sure that there shouldn't be too many employee IDs as part of this subquery. If there are so many, like for example, there are millions of rows of this subquery, then again, this query is going to perform very poorly. But for time being, E dot employee ID is actually a very good column to start with or Basically, it is the best column to access the employees table first because it is going to give you very less number of rows. Similarly, E dot phone number is equal to one unique number is there. Now we always know that the phone number is always unique. So instead of using employee ID, the best way is always to use E dot phone number provided that we have an index on the phone number. So till now we came to know that E dot phone number is the best column to start with. Definitely E dot higher date greater than 30th Jan 2004 and E dot higher date less than 30th Jan 2006 is going to give me lot number of rows. So I am unnecessarily carrying too many rows based on the higher date and then filter out my unwanted rows. So I definitely don't want to start with higher date. So these two conditions in the where part of the clause is something which can avoid initially to access. Again E dot commission percentage in 0 0.25 and 0.15 we should be avoiding this because it is also going to give me very high number of rows. Same is the case with D dot location ID is equal to 1700. Similarly, D dot minimum salary is greater than 1000. This is going to give me too many rows because it's a greater than operator. Similarly, L dot city is equal to Bombay. Sorry, so there can be multiple occurrences a city, right, in the locations table as well. So again, this is going to give me a little bit extra number of rows. 
and region ID is greater than three. So there can be multiple regions which is greater than three. So again in the C that is countries table for the region ID column I'm I'm going to get too many number of rows. So till now what I came to know that there are only two columns which I can start with that is E dot employee ID in this is the good column to start with and E dot phone number is the good column to start with. I can't start with any other columns because I can start with but I won't because if I start with other columns I am unnecessarily scanning too many number of rows which I can avoid it. So either phone number or the employee ID. Now what is the advantage of using a phone number? So phone number will always be unique. There is only one row I, won't, I am going to get retried out of this but initially in the employees table I don't have an index on the phone number. So if I have an index on phone number then e dot phone number is the best column to start with. But right now I don't have an index. So what I should be doing, I should be starting with e dot employee ID in. So I should be accessing the employees table using the employee ID column. Now if I want to access the employee IDs, I have to execute this part of the sub query, right? And this sub query is select manager ID from departments where department ID is equal to 10. So this again is a query which is a very good query and is going to give me only one row because from the departments table in the where part of the clause department id is a primary key so department id is equal to 10 is going to give me only one row right so if i execute this part of the subquery first i'm getting only one row that is some manager id and then this e dot employee id in that manager id is again going to qualify for only one row because employee id is a primary key so if i start with or if i access out of all these tables employees table first using the employee id I'm getting only one row, right? Now this employee ID, I am going to join with the, now this employees table, I'm going to join with the departments table using the department ID, right? Now when I join the employees table with the department table, that is one row joined with the department ID of the departments table is going to give me again one row because department ID is a primary key in the departments table. Now similarly, departments table is joining with the locations table if I see location ID in the location table is again a primary key. So now when I join one row from the departments table for the location ID with the location ID of the locations table, this join operation is again going to give me only one row because location ID is a primary key in the locations table. Similarly, locations is joined with the countries table and since again country ID is a primary key in the countries, this join operation is again going to give me only one row. And at the end, always execute the exist operator so that out of all these rows only the specific employee ID can go inside this exist subquery because if you see if this exist subquery is looking for e dot job ID which can be passed to the j drop job ID right so you can always pass after the employees table as well because it is in the employees table only after retrieving one row I can pass my one row here to the e dot job ID right if that is existing it's well and good if not then this query will finish even faster because it doesn't have to go for the other departments job uh, jobs and countries table because at the employees table itself there are no rows that is qualifying right so this is the order so this is how you can uh, deduce this such a long query by starting with such a column which is going to give you very less number of rows and avoiding the join operation and keeping the exist operator at the end so if i want to execute this I should be passing a very simple hint that is I have to execute this subquery first that is the reason why I have put leading of D2 right D2 is nothing but the department tables alias so that way this will execute this subquery first and then the employees ID E will be accessed and then the later the join with the departments table later the join with the locations table later the join with the countries table right and also the with the jobs table for the employees ID. So if you look at the execution plan here, right, this is and if you uh, make a parent child relationship out of it, so seventh is the first operation which is going to execute. So seventh operation is nothing but accessing the department ID is equal to 10, right. So this is nothing but your this part of the subquery. So department ID is getting executed, then this e dot employee ID is going to get executed by we can deduce this via this operation so once 7 is uh, executed 6 will execute 6 is nothing but filter on the manager id for the subquery after the 6th 9th will operate 9th is nothing but accessing the employees id for 
that manager ID of the subquery. After the ninth, there is a join operation nested loop, right? And after that, 11th is the operation which is going to execute, right? Now 11th is nothing but the join operation with the departments and the employees table, right? And whatever the, is the output of the join operation, there will be a table accessing by index row ID, which is nothing but filtering out the unwanted rows from the departments table. So 10th is nothing but filter on D dot location ID is equal to 1700. After that, the next operation is going to be 13, right? Now 13 is nothing but the join operation on the jobs and employees table, right? Again, this is going to give me one row because job ID is the primary key in the jobs table, right? The output of this join operation will be going for a table access by index ID, which is nothing but the filter on the pending rows of the uh, jobs table. So 12th is nothing but filter on the jobs table for the minimum salary and so on. So if you see the expected rows, I'm getting only one row out of each operation because in the start itself, I am accessing with the departments of the subquery and then with the employees ID. So if you want to again deduce further or confirm which is the best column I can start with, you can always run this all the select queries to confirm which column I should always start with. So if I do select manager ID from employees table, this is the subquery, I'm getting manual ID is equal to 200, but it is giving me only one row. So this is a good subquery to start with. Now, if you see the phone number, select count of star, I'm getting one row. So this is also a good column to start with, right? Phone number, but I don't have an index. So that's why I couldn't start with phone number. And if you same query, if I do for a higher date, it is going to give you 40 rows. So the thing is, I when I run this query, I'm getting only one row. But if I start with higher date, I mean, I will start with using the index on the higher date. I'm unnecessarily scanning 40 rows and then filtering out all my unwanted rows. So I definitely don't want to do that. That's why higher date is not the good column to start with. Now this is a very good case study. Interesting thing here. Select count of star from locations where location ID is equal to 1700. This is also going to give me one row, but we are not going to start with location ID. The reason why I'm going to tell you in some time. Similarly for minimum salary, you are getting thousand for minimum salary greater than thousand. You are getting nineteen rows, which is again not a good column to start with, and so on. So, like I said, location ID is equal to seventeen hundred. Even though I'm getting one row, is not a good column. And similarly, city is equal to Bombay for the location table. Even though I'm getting only one count, is not a good column to start with. The reason being this. So if I do D dot location ID is equal to 1700, I'm getting one row, but the departments table, when it joins with the employees table, in the employees table, department ID is not a primary key. So in the employees table, there can be many departments which are having the value of 1700. So unnecessarily, I'm going to scan employees table for 1700 department ID and there can be too many occurrences. So I definitely don't want to do that because if I start the reverse way, that is if I first access employees and then join with the departments table, it is going to give me very good performance because of the department being, department ID being the primary key in the departments table, right? So that is the reason. So that is a trick behind looking at a long query. So when you see a next time, a very long query, don't panic. You use this approach. Don't go with the join operation first. Ignore any exist clause, right? Always start with such a column which is going to give you less number of rows and then go with the join operation and make sure that the join operation that is the other table involved in the join operation is based on a primary key or foreign key relationship or a column which is going to again having too many number of distinct rows. Right? So I hope you liked my case study on long queries and see you in the next case study soon. Thank you so much.